So welcome back to, this is the third conversation actually with Ivo De Gennaro. Um, what's probably uh, shown itself to be important last few times is that nihilism and meaninglessness should be uh, discussed. Some speak of a meaning crisis, which apparently is currently going around. It's one of the ghosts in the machine that uh, people talk about. In philosophy, there are two thinkers, mainly Nietzsche and, and Heidegger, who think each in their own way after nihilism and what it means. So the question that we want to address is, what is the meaning of nihilism? And what is the meaning of nihilism beyond perhaps just uh, a simplistic negative understanding of it or some sort of a moralistic understanding or definition of nihilism. So this is the um, entrance into that. There's a text by Heidegger, um, which is published in Holzwege off the beaten track, entitled Nietzsche's Word, God is Dead, which we'll take as a foundation for this conversation, I suppose. And perhaps we could start here to understand how to begin when how, how does Nietzsche understand nihilism and then maybe also how does Heidegger understand nihilism? Uh, there is actually also the text you mentioned is very important. There are several texts uh, yeah. uh, by Heidegger on Nietzsche and on nihilism and one which I find very clear um, is uh, contained in that in the collection in the two volumes on, on Nietzsche by Heidegger. It's called uh, Designsgeschichtliche Bestimmung des Nihilismus, mm? uh, where we always have the problem of this Geschichtliche. Mm? Yes, we'll, yes, we'll yeah. have to devote a few minutes to that one day. Uh, the the be, okay, uh, being historical determination of nihilism. Uh, I think a very illuminating text. Anyway, um, yeah, so nihilism comes into philosophy with, with Nietzsche uh, as a metaphysical diagnosis. Um, of our epoch and, and actually of our entire tradition. And in Nietzsche, it's actually a, a, a negative phenomenon and a, a, de a destructive phenomenon. And um, we'll say something about his definition of uh, nihilism perhaps in a moment, just by way of introduction uh, for, for, for Nietzsche, the, the, the task is to acknowledge nihilism and to, uh, to assume it completely to uh, to admit it and to live through it as he says in order to eventually overcome it and leave it behind okay so Nietzsche says I'm the first complete nihilist because I'm the one who faces nihilism without trying to escape uh, without uh, looking for easy ways out which he says make everything worse so the first accomplished nihilist who uh, and, and his own thinking is basically the way out. It's, it's once again, you know, what philosophy does, that's the job of philosophy, to find the way out from the cave. So his, his metaphysics, his philosophy is a, is a way out from nihilism in the sense of an overcoming of nihilism. And we know, just to say that also, um, this way out has the form of the becoming of a, a type of man. Hmm? The, the, the superman, the overman is himself, that type of man, the way out from nihilism. Hmm? Okay, so just to start off with, you know, definitions, uh, and then we'll see to what extent we can clarify those. F for Nietzsche, as he himself says, nihilism means the aim is lacking, he says. Hmm? The, the answer to the why is lacking. Um, and it, he says nihilism is the devaluation of the highest values. That's his definition of nihilism, uh, which clearly implies, and we'll have to say what that means, that he thinks in terms of values, which in itself is a consequence of the fact that he thinks in terms of the will to power. Mm -hmm. So um, the highest values devalue themselves or are devalued. Uh, and, and this beginning with, the value of all values, which is God. You mentioned um, Nietzsche's dictum, God is 
God is Dead, which then gives the title to Heidegger's um, essay. Um, so, the, and when the highest, when the value of all values devalues itself, i.e., God is dead, then clearly, since he's at the top of the whole architecture of values and the source of all values, then consequently, when the, the highest, the value of all values and the highest values devalue themselves, the world collapses into valuelessness. And this is valuelessness is the way in which Nietzsche can grasp uh, senselessness, meaninglessness. You were talking about meaningless, meaninglessness. For Nietzsche, meaninglessness means valuelessness. And this means um, lack of, uh, of power or lack of, I mean, power means strength of life. So um, a weakening of life. For instance, he says in, in what we would today call globalization, um, with, as long as we have not found a way to overcome uh, nihilism uh, as human beings, we are destined to become weaker, to lose value and to become, to um, shrink, so to speak, to shrink um, and to be, uh, our needs become smaller and we, we, ju we adjust to this great machinery, which is this machinery of this enormous uncanny power machinery that he's, he says is inevitably coming. So this is nihilism for him. And for him, um, in his diagnosis, this uh, has been coming for a long while. As a matter of fact, th this, should we call it, this virus of nihilism is intrinsic into the very, in, in the very birth of our tradition, into the, in the constitution of our Christian Platonic tradition. Um, the, the which he analyzes as a reaction to a first nihilism. So he says, our tradition is the outcome, the Christian Platonic tradition is the outcome of a counter movement, a, a counter action, um, which, you know, we can identify that with, the, for instance, uh, with the, the epoch of, 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 so, of sophistics, you know? Uh, so, so that nihilism, he says, the first nihilism, as a reaction to that, as a, um, as, a, as, a, as a kind of drug that tries to, um, to um, cure us from that and, to, um, and to, to save us from that first nihilism, we have, in his diagnosis, that's his perspective, we have a first, the constitution of, of a principle of um, attributing value to things. In what, in, again, in his perspective, is the moral, the metaphysical or moral way and the metaphysical or moral way to constitute values and that is to say to give sense to things and to give sense to the human being to give a meaning mm. is by establishing some principle of being up there not not on the is um, determined um is he he would say is invented then this secures a meaning a sense to mm. everything including the, hum the human being mm? And uh, and he said and and he this gives rise to our our let's call it our cultural tradition as he himself would say the cultural tradition of, of Europe and in its in its evolution and then he he's very subtle in and and, and also very knowledgeable I mean he knows he he knows our our our, our cultural history let's say and what he says what happens is that that at some point this this invention uh, is, uh, so to speak, revealed. And, f and uh, it, because he says, uh, one of the highest values in this tradition is veracity. And at some point, man, as he becomes stronger, realizes the instrumentality of these values. They are not absolute values. They are not eternal fixed values, which are there, so to speak, independently of man, but they are just instruments. And so, this is the recognition that what appear to be um, absolute val values and absolute truths um, that they are only means instruments for for, for of, of a will to power mm -hmm. in order to establish values that this marks the beginning of the the, the collapse mm -hmm. the, of this um, 
event, um, ongoing um, event of, um, of devaluation of values. Basically, that is the outbreak of this virus, the outbreak of nihilism, which then um, he observes and, and describes in, in his epoch uh, in its unfolding, yeah. the devaluation of values. So on the one hand, for Nietzsche, the uh, crystal mor Christian moral hypothesis, for example, is a great bulwark, uh, a, 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 a wall warding off nihilism, an instrumental value setting system yeah. um, that is on some level even to some degree life affirming, but then its intrinsic anti-life values take over. That's the genealogy, perhaps. And then once the life denial um, gets, gets too strong, gets too intense, uh, it begins to become nihilistic in itself. So it's, is, is that um, a, a proper way of describing it, that they are intrinsically nihilistic because these values also are in uh, denial of the force of life? Yes, and this is why I would say, I agree with everything, just not, perhaps we, we need to say it um, in, in a different way. Namely, you said at the beginning, they are in some way life-affirming, they're not they are necessary in a way for that form of life that was the only means in, to, in order to 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 be in, that was the only way they could unfold their own will to power through a life negating will mm -hmm. but it is it's from the very beginning intrinsically life negating and debasing our uh, the only earth that we have and so on because everything all truth all value was place somewhere else in and notably in principles which are excluded from the movement of life because they're fixed everything which is not becoming Nietzsche thinks very traditionally in the two categories being and becoming he just takes that and yeah. uh, and for him being is something which is uh, taken out takes itself out from the movement of the will to power it, it it's everything that is absolute is life negating because it's, it's excluded from the movement of life, which is the will to power. But for once we, we specified this intrinsic um, negativity or, or this intrinsically nihilistic character uh, in the sense of life negation, the, the way that you described this uh, genealogy is, is exactly the way I understand Nietzsche as well. Yes. So it's a, a, a will to power from, well, it's slave morality, that's Nietzsche's term, mm -hmm. that, that takes over in the beginning. And um, man has now reached a higher sphere, but when he describes um, the, the, the death of God, that's not a triumph, is it? In The Madman, what it described as, is he says something like, we've, we've washed away the horizon. Um, we have, um, we have, we have removed the sun or this planet or this planet from the sun. So we've, uh, we've basically lost a sense of orientation. Um, so in, in what sense could we say that for Nietzsche, we, that he sees man as getting stronger or more powerful? Mm -hmm. um, well, uh, the, the fact that man is more powerful, uh, he just, he just um, um, acknowledges that and he, he um, observes it in the fact that we don't need those absolute values anymore. As you said, he says, the hypothesis God is much too extreme for, for us today. It's too extreme. So, um, but that's just, you know, for him, thinking is just feeling, measuring power, measuring um, strength of life and, and, uh, and feeling it. So in, in, in the way in which he can feel, um, those absolute values are, are not necessary anymore. And um, to the extent to which we surrogate the, the devalued highest values with other moral values, for instance, the, um, the, the, the best, the, 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 the kind of end that we have in political economy or in socialism, those things which are surrogates for him um, of, of the Christian God, um, we just, um, 
we avoid to, in a way, draw the consequence from the fact that we don't need those values anymore, and that we need now not to surrogate the devalued values with other values, with other moral values, but that we have to acknowledge the new principle of the setting of values, the new, the, the, which is the principle which has always been the only principle, namely the will to power. So we can now say yes to the will to power, and there is a necessity for us to say yes to the will to power, and therefore yes to life, finally. And, and so um, there is the, the necessity that he um, sees within nihilism, and that he experiences through nihilism, and thanks to nihilism, because nihilism has this gift to bring. So what he experiences within the very experience of nihilism is the necessity for, for man to, for the first time, establish values out of an explicit acknowledgement of the principle of value setting, namely the will to power, rather than uh, exerting or implementing a will to power which negates the will to power and setting values um, in a life negating manner. And this, this um, transformation of man to, towards uh, a life affirming uh, being is precisely the, the coining of the type that is uh, the overman and is the way out from nihilism and is a, um, so it's like, you know, we drew the parallel to the cave before and then there is also parallel to, to Plato in what you described with the sun and so on, um, the midday and so on. Um, yeah. So that is the turning around of what in Plato is the turning around of the soul, the complete revolution of the soul from, you know, from of the prison of it turns around. That is this, um, this fixation of man. Mm, Nietzsche says man is the not yet fixed step, the not yet established animal. Mm, that's nicht festgestellte Team. So that is for him the, what he sees as then the task of his own thinking, what basically through his own body <laughs> needs yeah. to happen. Mm, because it goes through the body. Mm. So the, the task for us or for anyone uh, who's strong enough to speak uh, with, with Nietzsche perhaps, is to stride through nihilism, is to fully accept and embrace meaninglessness. Yes, uh, meaninglessness, uh, because uh, to get the, this, to be hit by yeah. this meaninglessness, but it's a moral meaninglessness. So, yeah. it, but you, you first have to experience that and let that be, so to speak, in order to acknowledge the, the, the different, not, not non-moral way in which you can build sense. In order to learn that, you first have to unlearn the moral way, manner of sense-making, which we have is in our flesh and blood, because for, for our entire tradition, we have been educated and formed, and everything around us speaks morally. Hmm? Yeah. The world has only one language, hmm? and if you look at our world, uh, for, for clearly what Nietzsche sees uh, is a, a, a predominance of, of, of morality and, and, um, and I think if we remain in his perspective what we can observe in our world is that uh, it's, it's a totally totally moral world, moralistic uh, world I, 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 I think maybe it's always dangerous to make these comparisons but I cannot imagine a more moralistic epoch than ours it's moralistic everywhere. It's it's really a disease. Yeah, it's a it's a will to power of the weak. Morality. Yeah, of 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 the weak. I I don't want to you know um, go into some kind of categories of human beings, but it's a it's a it's a will to power that um, that um, d does not acknowledge. Um, senselessness and that insists on uh, on 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 affirming senselessness mm. and uh, so it's um, it's what what Nietzsche to, just to adopt uh, his words uh, would call a, a passive nihilism that is to say a, a nihilism which adapts to um, to the devaluation of values how and how do we adapt to the devaluation of values actually by 
as I said before, by shrinking, by not expecting any sense. We don't expect any sense anymore. We, we are content with just the functioning, with what he says, the, some kind of in, invented uh, happiness. We reduce our needs, but our needs of, of, of true, of sense, no? And, uh, and so by, he makes this comparison with, with the flea, you know, in, in Zarathustra. Hmm? The last, when he says the last men are those who live the longest and so on. Um, why? Because, you know, it's like when you are in the desert, you, you, you know, there, there is a kind of animal that is very well adapted to those conditions um, because it it's, it's very simple, it has very limited needs, and so it can survive uh, very long because, you know, much longer than a more complex, a richer uh, being. No? So we have this, um, th this moralism is is the is the is the dress um, is the dress of this um, adapted um, unexpecting um, uh, being that uh, that basically finds a way to uh, to adapt to this senselessness and to just functioning. Yeah, yeah, and um, there's there's something that strikes me about. So the so-called discourse or discourses on nihilism, they, they can be everywhere. They can be in popular culture. Um, there are books written on Nietzsche, as you know, Nietzsche was dynamite. I am dynamite is a recent also biography, um, not so, a recent biography on Nietzsche. Um, and what strikes me about these books on Nietzsche sometimes is that they're very often quite moralistic themselves, first of all. Um, but they're all, they're also, it, it, what, it's, nihilism is itself becoming a bit of a product of popular culture. Uh, so it's, it's almost hip to be nihilistic or live in a meaningless age. It's, um, it's as if the, 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 what Nietzsche describes as passive nihilism um, is more or less what we are experiencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, what we need to do is to see on, on the one hand um, what we can really learn from, from uh, Nietzsche in, in terms of a, of a diagnosis. Um, and, and for instance, we can identify this, this uh, passive uh, nihilism in the sense of this adaptation. The other side of the coin is that um, Nietzsche, as a matter of fact, Nietzsche not only does not show any way out, at, at least or, or what he envisages as a, as a way out, then ends in a, in, in a sense in, 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 in a catastrophe. Um, but that is a different, uh, that's now, that's a different um, thing. Huh? So um, uh, we can look at both sides. Hmm? So um, until now, we, we, we looked at the, at the productive side um, and, what, and how Nietzsche can help us to to, to diagnose some phenomena of our time. So just, uh, just as in these uh, nihilistic attitudes, uh, it's, there is no uh, perspective of, um, of, of, uh, of, of healing, of, um, it's just um, remaining in this destructiveness, but yeah. in this, yes, let's call it in this passive way, and mm -hmm. almost sometimes in a morbid way. Um, and this, is, this we can see with, um, or to some extent with Nietzsche. But on the other hand, then we could also address the question, but what kind of way out is the one that Nietzsche is showing? And clearly the way out he's showing depends on his diagnosis of nihilism. And, and, and this is where Heidegger would come in with a completely different uh, perspective. One more question, and perhaps before we probably turn more to Heidegger, is in how far is tragedy or the, tr the Dionysian uh, important here for in Nietzsche or in Nietzsche's thought in terms of overcoming nihilism or striding through nihilism and becoming a full nihilist, a complete nihilist in order to overturn nihilism? Uh, well, in many ways, w one of them is the, the, the eternal recurrence of the, of the like, I would say. Mm, Di uh, Dionysus is the god of this eternal eternal recurrence and the eternal recurrence is 
um, arguably, um, again, that's that's um, Heidegger's reading here, but um, arguably his most his most profound thought. And so the mm. let's say um, Dionysus in this sense is as the god of the eternal recurrence is is um, the, his theological the theological component of Nietzsche's um, determination of. Uh, of, of the world and, and of the way out. Hmm. So um, he, uh, now, now it's, it's really complicated because um, this eternal recurrence, which, which for him, which for Nietzsche is, he's, he himself says, this is the, the great midday. Hmm. So the, the will to power it, in the, joined with the eternal recurrence of the like, hmm, not a, I would say rather than the eternal recurrence of the same, he says that is the, the, the summit of the consideration. So that is the, uh, his ultimate point. And for him, this is uh, the, the point of which, which basically determines what it, the way out as he can see it. But we, then we really have to ask, what, what, what are we talking about? Because he's, um, what, what, what is this way out? He himself has, we know that he has, his tone is a tone this halcyonic tone, which uh, mm. so that, uh, which he describes as a tone of uh, lightness, you know, light footedness, um, clear sky, you know, um, and and uh, so lightness, clarity, um, but and, and 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 also something that he that is something felt, but um, then we must really ask uh, what what that is. I mean, that is it's all very problematic. There's something though when when it comes to the so-called meaning crisis, and this uh, is um, I don't want to stress this too much, but what I find striking about what what's going on there, this is a very popular topic, um, is simply what's what I find a bit odd is that it's an acknowledgement that something is weird, uncanny, strange about this epoch of ours, mm -hmm. and still. The assumption is that we can simply find a solution by, to quote, updating ourselves to this meaning crisis by finding a new a cognitive framework in order to get to the next level. Um, there's something I think that's fundamentally uh, missing or not even considered uh, in, in the first place. And that's the, that's perhaps, again, the tragic. Um, and that's, almost like a it seems to be a bit of an enforcement a reinforcement of nihilism from a different uh, perspective on it from a different angle yeah here again to some extent we can with Nietzsche diagnose this and and I would say the two the two ways in which you can see this with Nietzsche is a what I already said this is it's basically an adaptive move it's um, it's on on the one hand um, it's it's uh, just an adaptive move, mm -hmm. uh, and this adaptive move um, is, however, uh, in itself again moralistic. Meaning Nietzsche would say this is substituting the devalued values with other values, which um, without, however, um, inverting the polarity of values. So without. Um, um, and therefore inverting the ranking of values through the acknowledgement of the will to power. So it's a moralistic adaptation to put the two things together. You know, what I think most of what you were describing as um, ways to deal with the meaning crisis and so on, I, I think uh, with, with Nietzsche, as far as Nietzsche's uh, position helps us to, to diagnose this, or uh, in his perspective, we would call it moralistic adaptations. In, uh, really through and through moralistic, even when they appear as detached, you know, from any, or realistic and so on, but it's everything, it's, it's, it's moralistic to the bone, you know, and, and adaptive, you know. I just reduce um, my expectations. I, re I reduce uh, my expectations uh, with regard to sense or with regard to what the human being is. I don't, uh, I just acknowledge that you know the human being is more similar to a machine and there is the machine part and then there is the human part but 
where is the difference anyway and animals also mm, are intelligent and so you know it's but it's uh, this upgrading that you were this is it is it and Nietzsche himself calls it a downsizing you know he describes it as we downsize ourselves as human beings right? yeah we, up, we upgrade as we downsize um, <laughs> uh, but there's there's something you, you you pointed towards and I want to maybe to spend dwell on that a bit uh, which is because the eternal recurrence of the same or of the like as you put it, the ewige wiederkehr des gleichen uh, perhaps you could also say briefly why you would translate it as the eternal recurrence of the like instead of saying the eternal recurrence of the same because very importantly the German word das gleiche is not the English word das, the same um, this, there's a distinction between dasselbe and das gleiche and also the das identische, the identical so that's quite important but also you made the connection there which is not often drawn and which uh, deserves more attention between the halcyonic which the English knows the expression halcyon days, that's halcyonische, uh, the iceberg, the halcyon or elcyon, uh, depending, um, and the eternal recurring of the like. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so the first is in a sense very simple. Why the, the like or the mm -hmm. equal, I don't know, uh, and not the same, because the, first of all, for Nietzsche, there is no sameness in the sense of a uh, substantial sameness, uh, substantial uh, identity, but for him, das Gleiche just means uh, fundamentally a, um, a constellation of force, uh, a force constellation, of, uh, a configuration of forces. So th that that uh, that e that the uh, once again that constellation or that configuration of forces hmm? eternally uh, already taken place infinite times and taking place and will take place infinite times. So um, and that's the, the, the difference between the Selbe in German and the and das Gleiche. Mm -hmm. So it's in, in a way, let's say an, an ontic. It's a, because for, it's just a, um, a, a configuration of life in, in terms of um, um, centers of power mm -hmm. that being since um, time is eternal, we'd have to talk about what that means. But for him, that is the presupposition. Mm. Uh, time is not contained, for instance, in a design of divine providence anymore, with, where beginning and the end of time is all contained in the in the in the truth that is basically the revealed truth. For instance, mm. that is a way in which we contain time, mm. and we have beginning and end and draw the order of things respectively to each other is determined by the design of, of creation. Mm? So once God is dead and all of that falls, falls away, what do we have? We have, uh, this is a very, a very peculiar thought. It's, an, it's absolutely not something that goes without saying, but for Nietzsche, so we, we have just infinite time. So the infinite flow of becoming, mm? but this, but this infinity is really very big. <laughs> infinity is um, is a hell of a long time. And so in this infinity, there is actually no other possibility than conceiving that, that every constellation of forces, every configuration of life takes place infinite, infinite times, recurs infinitely, because uh, no matter... So this is not something which we can uh, exclude by saying, well, how improbable... Uh, is it that you know we can see it in terms of atoms, or you know, or, or of uh, really in a, in a completely physical way? We can say, well, that's if we had to express in numerical terms how likely it is that a same, uh, a, an equal um, constellation um, happens again, occurs again, uh, we would have to write something ten to the minus. I don't know how much. Um, and then we could even introduce, I don't know, considerations of, uh, from quantum mechanics and so on. But infinity doesn't care. So infinity says, I laugh about your, your improbability because I'm infinite. So, so infinity contains everything infinitely. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, what we can say concerning this distinction between the same and, uh, and the like. Uh, so no substantial same, but just conf a, a, a configuration, a material, we could even say, a material configuration of, uh, of life, 
of, of, the, of a totality, if we can speak of a totality of life in the universe. And um, then you were talking about this, this lightness. Well, this is, uh, I don't know, this is a difficult point. I'm, 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 I'm tr now I'll, I'll try to improvise, but I just think that what Nietzsche sees there is, he sees what, 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 what for him appears as a solution. You know, once we have, once we say, we can say we, we, uh, yes to something in its eternal recurrence, Mm -hmm. um, and 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 once we are at the point in which it is something, because he says nihilism means that things amount to nothing. This is what nihilism means. And in order for things to be something and not nothing, we have to just acknowledge them as a, a will to power, mm -hmm. as um, a value in the eternal recurrence. And once he has, once this has become clear for him, there is I don't know if. It's it's dangerous, you know, to qualify this to because one can go wrong. But it's a kind of euphoria, also, you know. He he sees the this solution, which which seems to be for him the way out, because this is what the 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 overman has to live up to. He, the the overman is that being that constitutes its itself grows that 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 implements its life movement in the awareness of this point mm? that the only source of sense and the only sense is willing every instant as an eternal instant mm? and where eternity however has doesn't have the structure of something which is outside of time or of, of, of lasting from the beginning of time to the end of time, but eternal for him is, has, is, is of the eternity is obtained in the modality of, of recurring infinitely. So that's, that, as he says, this is obtaining being by way of becoming. You know, when the becoming recurs infinite times, that this, he says, is the, is the greatest approximation of a world of becoming to a world of being, you know, because in this Nietzsche is completely in the in the tradition, as I as I mentioned before. So for him, uh, he he must obtain being in a sense, and, and but since there is no being in the sense of something fixed and stable, steady like the ideas or something like that, so how do I obtain that? I uh, you know I, I only have becoming. Everything is just becoming. Life is just becoming. You know, it's just the flowing. It's just the flow. Hmm? Yeah. And so, what, what, so in, in a sense, now, just to, to say this, this is in a, in, a, in a certainly insufficient way, but that's the trick. I mean, <laughs> the trick is uh, how, do I get, how do I get being, you know? Um, I get it with this, uh, with this approximation. And this is why he says this is the highest will to power. And when he says topmost summit of the consideration, Gipfel der Betrachtung, um, so th this uh, this top of the the summit of the consideration implies um, some ultimate clarity. You know the, the the clarity of the midday and and with it this uh, this lightness and then dancing and you know light footedness and all these things that we said. Um, this we can to some extent. Um, we can we can to some extent follow him in this, but you know that is Nietzsche. I mean, it's it's him, you know, and we have to find our own way in access to this. You know? We can. I, what I'm saying is that I not because I, I shouldn't generalize, but I can I can follow him to some extent, and I, you know, he has um, I, I, he, I can follow him to some extent in 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 this touching this ultimate point, but. Clearly, I I also see it in a in a clearly everyone does uh, in a different in a different way, and I, it's uh, it's a very strange point that he reaches there. Very a very strange point. He there's something else I want to um, touch on in Nietzsche before we go to Heidegger. That's something we discussed to about ten years ago uh, in your course. There's Nietzsche speaks about the total economic management of the earth, which is inevitably in store for us. He says, this will be our history for the next 200 years, more or less. Mm -hmm. And perhaps we can, that, that's, I think, 
a Nietzsche that's not well known, um, but that's also is, is an extremely prescient uh, perspective that he takes here, and that's mm -hmm. presumably got to do something uh, with nihilism as well. For him. Yeah. Uh, first of all, um, I, I learned recently that he in this text he refers to um, a book that he had read uh, by an economist. Hermann, uh, it's called Hermann. Um, I can I can give you the title. Who who sees these uh, this uh, evolution um, of wor of world economy in, um, in in a very optimistic way, precisely in in the terms that he himself then describes as uh, economic optimism. Everything is great, and you know this. And so in in uh, in this text where he talks about the. Um, total economic management of the earth, he responds to actually this economist. Mm -hmm. But th that's, it, it, it can be interesting to look at that, but clearly it's, it's much more important to, to, to try to understand what Nietzsche is saying. Well, in, in his perspective, why, why is this inevitable? Like Hermann, the economist, has no idea, has no clue why. He's just describing things, you know? Um, but for Nietzsche, this is a metaphysical, he wouldn't say metaphysical, uh, an inevitability, okay? But how can we understand that? Well, it's, in, in, it's, it's really an, an, an economic consideration because what is nihilism and the devaluation of values? It means that um, all those structures, all those sense-giving structures, um, which for Nietzsche are forms of, are, are forms and instances of a will to power, even Christianity and morality and so on, all those structures, um, as the highest values devalue themselves, they dissolve. There is a dissolution of, these, of the institutions, of the structures, of the forms through which, as a humanity, we have for centuries been, been uh, attributing meaning. Now, what happens when... Um, when these uh, institutions and, and forms and structures, uh, these configurations of life, as he would say, as they dissolve, well, we have an outburst uh, of power. So, you know, power is not channeled anymore in those institutions and forms. So we have an outburst of power, but how is, how is the human being, how is humanity hit by this outburst of power? Well, basically uh, it finds humanity on the wrong foot, <laughs> namely in the complete incapacity to um, set and to pose this outbreak of power um, as a condition for ourselves, for our own growth. Mm -hmm. So because we are trained only and educated to um, set and pose values in the modality of morals. That's the only w way we know. Hmm? But that doesn't work anymore. The moral way of est establishing meaning hmm? doesn't work anymore. Since we are still stuck in this moral way of posing values, of making sense, um, we have this unleashed power on the one hand, and on the other hand, man who is not prepared for that, completely unprepared, not prepared precisely to um, to, to take advantage of this, to make of this a benefit for himself, to make it into a condition for his own growth. And this is why uh, man shrinks. So, and, and why, as long as man is stuck with only the, the moral way of making sense, man has no other choice than, since that situation is not tenable, uh, man has no other way, uh, no other option than to adapt precisely. Hmm? So you have, and, and to participate in this um, explosion of power, in this, he says, this uncanny process of, and this power machine that we are building, which is the overall economic management of the earth, man participates as, a, as an adapted functionary, hmm? as somebody who just helps to, he says, in, with, with specialized tasks, re, he talks of this higher Chineseness. Huh? The higher Chineseness, and what, he, what does he mean by that? Uh, he means basically a, a humanity that is just, you know, just a, a working machine hmm? and, and uh, uh, very specialized, uh, carrying out uh, specialized, simple tasks in a very effective way, uh, not having 
basically not 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 having any any uh, any higher need anymore. Hmm? So I, I, um, I work in a work animal. Hmm? So um, or the, the perfect kind of um, um, functionary for this big machinery. Hmm? So um, the overman, on the other hand, which which is a, again a necessity, which is intrinsic in this in this movement, namely as a counter movement, is as he says, the synthesizing, the the yes saying, being the the the, the being that can from all of this, from this uh, evolution towards this uh, overall economic management of the earth, can can make of this an occasion, an occasion to build the life affirming type, mm? to conceive and to um, to shape, to mold, namely to mold itself, mm? the, the 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 man that can mold himself as the affirming, synthesizing. Um, being um, the, the finally established animal. Mm -hmm. So um, what we have there is, uh, from 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 our point of view, we have clearly, but but that is not exclusive to to Nietzsche. The the, the awareness of this coming, uh, what in recent times we have uh, we, we we have be began to call um, uh, globalization. Um, that is not unique to Nietzsche, but what is unique is a metaphysical diagnosis of this. Mm -hmm. And would it then be proper uh, to say that this explosion of power that Nietzsche identifies, that he diagnoses in this epoch, that that for him bears the necessity or brings the necessity with it to overturn metaphysics itself, as he says, to turn everything on its head? Yes, to, to turn Platonism on its head. Yes. You see, the, the un, the, this, what I call the explosion of power, I don't know how sufficient this is, but this unleashed power is something which appears from the perspective of man. From the perspective of man, there is now this power that, that, that man cannot, or this, this, these forces that man can just participates in producing, but that man cannot control in a way, namely make into conditions for himself, into value into values. Hmm? Now, the overturning is precisely the overturning of Platonism. Um, it, what does that mean? It means uh, the way out from the moral manner of, pose, of value setting, of, of, the, of establishing values, of esteeming. Hmm? Um, and that is uh, that, uh, the, the important thing to see in this, uh, in this overturning so what is important to see is that the the overturning is not just a turning upside down in the sense that values which used to be uh, at the top now come to be at the bottom and those which used to be at the bottom are now on the top because he himself would say that not only doesn't help anything but it makes everything worse. So let's let's just make an example. Um, in our tradition, the soul was high in the ranking and the body was low in the ranking. Now, overturning Platonism doesn't mean now the, the, the soul is nothing and we need to put the value at the top of the ranking, which is actually something which we are doing today. The we, body is the highest value. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, um, Nietzsche would say, this, what happened here is an, a turning upside down without changing the principle of valuation. And he says, when just turning upside down or just substituting values with other values, as in this case, for instance, of suddenly placing the body at the top of the ranking, this, he says, not only doesn't help anything, but it makes things worse. And so, again, this would be an instance of, of passive nihilism. And we could say to some extent, in a Nietzschean perspective, this is what is happening today with this sudden, you know, cent central position of, of the body and, this strange, uh, uh, this strange uh, fetishism, you know, of uh, that we have today. Now, because so the 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 turning upside down must come as a consequence of the fact that we now explicitly acknowledge the principle that sets values, namely the will to power. Now, once we say yes to the will to power, 
Mm? A consequence of that is that actually now the body will come to will come to be at the top or in a higher position and the soul is in a sense devalued. Mm? But as a consequence of the affirmation of the principle of valuation or appearing will, will now be high and truth will rank lower mm? or certainty will rank lower, scientific certainly, certainty will rank below the appearing of, of art. Mm? Be- why? Because art is a higher will to power than, than science. It gives us greater perspectives for the for the growth of life it's a fr- it's a it, it's a it's freer in its projecting new horizons for the will to power so when we when we say overturning uh, umkehrung uh, of platonism we should always remember that it it's not just turning upside down but that the the, the result of the of values being in a sense overturned is the result um, is the result of the um, insight and the acknowledgement uh, insight in and acknowledgement of the principle of valuation, which is um, so of the fact that instead of saying no to the will to power implicitly, which Platonism is no to a no is a will to power that says no to the will to power. Hmm? Now Nietzsche says. Let's stop to implement a will to power which says no to the will to power. And this is what precisely what Platonism is. In his perspective. Okay. Yeah. But that that stands and Heidegger sees that among many other things, is antithetical. It's in opposition to. It's a, it takes the position of being against Platonism and therefore re- remains related to actually fixated on or actually becomes it um, becomes its opposite. Yeah. In, in a sense, it's the most extreme Platonism. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I, I wonder how, in what sense is it that Heidegger takes on because Heidegger is the first to see the meaning of, of Nietzsche for that tradition and what it is that Nietzsche um, how and, and how far Nietzsche is also to a certain degree the end of that tradition and, and of course you have to be careful what we mean by an end of a tradition or a certain way of uh, thinking or trajectory but but for Heidegger l- takes Nietzsche's dictum God is dead to think further what it is that we mean by nihilism today so maybe we could try to uh, reach into that now Mm-hmm. Yes, um, it's not easy, but we can try. Um, okay, again, let's just start with a few things which we just say and we just um, name them, and, and and then we'll see how much of that we can we can clarify. Okay, so in a very schematic uh, way, for Nietzsche, um, Nietzsche, for Heidegger, Nietzsche is the most extreme nihilist, and his way out from nihilism is is no way out um, at all. Um, what is the what is the the simplest way to indicate the notions of nihilism uh, that are in place here? Um, there is this formula which Heidegger himself uses in the essay that I was referring to earlier on, mm-hmm. contained in the the second Nietzsche volume, he says, well, for Nietzsche, nihilism means that literally it is nothing with beings or with their being in the sense of a being. It is nothing, and this uh, expression, it is nothing with, es ist nichts mit, just it's a slightly idiomatic uh, expression. It means uh, that beings, for Nietzsche, beings amount to nothing. Beings lack what is necessary to be beings. They are nothing. Beings are nothing. Um, and um, Heidegger actually um, says that this is a version of nihilism which lacks the insight into the um, let's say, the essence, or as we try to say, the biding of nihilism, uh, 
because he says what in his his own uh, understanding of nihilism that na is that nihilism is the circumstance that not it is nothing with beings es ist nichts mit dem seinen but es ist nichts mit dem sein it is nothing with being being itself hmm? being itself amounts to nothing now if nihilism is the circumstance that being itself amounts to nothing or as heidegger says that being itself stays away that being itself holds off then um, this nihilism is actually a way to characterize the metaphysical tradition mm. the entire metaphysical tradition including nietzsche mm, um, insofar as in the entire tradition of um, metaphysics uh, what happens is precisely that being itself holds off that being itself stays away why because metaphysics uh, or the tra tradition of philosophy is a way to determine being but how in the modality of beings as such of beings in their truth of beings in their ground of beings in their sense so insofar as the metaphysical tradition is the tradition of the or uh, the truth of beings or of the being of beings hmm? that is to say of being understood as a ground for beings insofar as metaphysics is this tradition metaphysics is in itself nihilistic insofar as being itself in this entire tradition stays away is never experienced never interrogated as such being itself as heidegger then says in his in its own in its own truth so heidegger then um uh, co um, coins the expression eigentlich nihilismus and when always when there is the word eigentlich we have we can okay at first we say well nihilism, nihilism properly speaking okay that's correct if we go a little bit deeper clearly eigentlich there is ereignis the word ereignis which speaks in that and that's actually what what he what he means because necessarily he means that but let's for the moment skip that um so he says proper nihilism proper okay let's just leave it at that for the moment nihilism proper is metaphysics in so in as the tradition of thinking including nietzsche as the tradition of thinking in which it is, it is nothing with being itself being itself holds off but how does this nihilism proper actually then take place well it takes place in 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 the way that um, within metaphysics there is no awareness of the fact that being itself holds off that it is nothing with being so what 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 metaphysics is including including nietzsche is the omission of the circumstance that it is nothing the omission in thinking that it is nothing with being the omission of the holding off the omission of the staying away of being itself so nihilism proper the eigentliche nihilismus which is metaphysics itself in in nietzsche in heidegger's diagnosis manifests itself in its in its improper modality namely as the omission of what it itself is it omits to acknowledge that it is itself metaphysics the thinking of the staying away uh, it, the, the thinking which takes place in the staying away of being that's what it omits it omits, it omits the, staying the staying away so so the the full mm, characterization of nihilism in heidegger is the original unity of of um, nihilism proper and improper which is the way in which it effectively took place as metaphysics um the the unity of eigentlicher and uneigentlicher uh, nihilismus this is the phenomenon of nihilism hmm? now clearly as long as we remain in the improper modality this is is uh, 
sterile. It's a sterile nihilism because it's a ni- it's a it's a nihilism now in the in the Heideggerian definition, which is unaware of itself, which is stuck in determining always again a new sense of beings, a new ground, a, a, a new ground for for beings. That is to say, it is stuck in acknowledging being itself only in this um, in this modality of its being the ground uh, for beings, including Nietzsche. Mm? The will to power in the eternal recurrence is a, is a way to determine the being of beings. Now, insofar as, as metaphysics, by definition, now is, is stuck in, in this unawareness of the holding off of being itself, it is, it is sterile, meaning that there is no there is no way out from nihilism because there is also no acknowledgement of nihilism itself so there is no no healing or, or no thinking in the direction of this staying of this holding off of this staying away of being itself and therefore of it of it turning in this staying away hmm? so that is step on the other hand nihilism proper, as that is to say, as it appears now in Heidegger's perspective, the same nihilism, the same nihilism that Nietzsche thinks, um, but now um, in, in, in envisaged as what it is, is a fertile nihilism. Is so Because it's the acknowledgement, it contains the acknowledgement that um, nihilism consists in the staying away or the holding off of being itself, and so the omission is taken away. So there is, it, it, we, we do not omit the staying away. Auslassen is, is Heidegger's word yeah. form. Uh, insofar as there is this thinking does not no longer omit um, the, the staying away or the holding off of being itself, it is in itself, we could say, fertile because it is, because now we are, responding to what is actually taking place because what is actually taking place is not that being just that beings lose their meaning just to go back to the phenomenon of meaning crisis and so on what what actually takes place is not just that um, beings lose their meaning which is the only thing that we can see within this the scope of um, of within a metaphysical scope, we can only see the destructive part. We can only see the l- loss of sense, and 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 then try to contrive ways out from this. But there is no way of overcoming anything because we are we are stuck in in a in in the wrong nihilism, so to speak. So our the scope of our diagnosis is too restricted mm? because it's the metaphysical scope is such that. Um, there, there is, there is. On the one hand, we are obliged to look for ways out, but there is no n- nothing like um, a, a way out. Um, it's it's just not conceivable. Huh? So, um, the um, w- what on the other hand appears in the perspective of um, of um, in this fertile perspective is that this destruction, the 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 negative the negativity of, um, of nihilism is just a, a consequence, is a consequence of precisely the omission, that omission. It's a consequence of the omission of, um, of the holding off of being itself. Mm-hmm. And, and so this, the fact that um, today we experience only beings uh, only the effective, only the effectual in its destructiveness, in its meaninglessness, and that we, you know, all these phenomena that we have today, or the fact that we, we basically have no relation to our own essence anymore. We are, it's, we, 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 it's, we are like cut off from, from the source of our being. Huh? Um, all of this, which within this sterile perspective um, appears as, as it does, for instance, for Nietzsche, as a loss of values to which he responds with, in, with this very strange <laughs> um, move, let's say, of saying, let's affirm this senselessness, because that's what the saying yes for him is, the, the pantheistic yes. 
and and let and let's just acknowledge that th this senselessness makes sense as long as we can draw um, as some some strengthening, as some growth, some an intensification of life from from it. You know, but it's a, like a des it's a desperate move. You know, you know, it's diagnosed from from this different perspective. It's really an ex it's something. It's it's extreme in a in a in a really remarkable uh, way so um so clearly this this what i call fertile those this is not heidegger's word for, but in this fertile perspective of um, of acknowledging nihilism not as the meaninglessness of beings but as a as the staying away of being itself um everything changes completely everything so we we are in a completely new new perspective now it, uh, it's important just to stress this perhaps uh, one more time that when heidegger speaks of then metaphysics as nihilism that that's not a moralistic claim or a moralistic point uh, it's not a pejorative i would just want to stress that but you mentioned something that we that we should uh, perhaps dwell on a bit which is the relationship between so what does he mean by eigentlich the, the official translation of course is authentic so eigentlich and nihilismus would be authentic nihilism but whenever heidegger speaks of especially then the so-called later philosophy of something that's eigen coming into its own the eigenness is at stake is at play as well so in in, in what sense is there a, rela a, re a relationship between in, in nihilism and eigenness Okay, if we if we um, if we um, go the go, go the, a very um, schematic uh, way, um, Ereignis is the, the relation of the the being or the biding of man to being itself. That is this relation between man in his wesen in his abiding and being itself this in heidegger is uh, is conceived in the form of what he calls um, ereignis and so eigentlich nihilismus means that uh, this relation which has the structure let's call it structure huh? yeah the structure of um, of ereignis stays away with, because with being itself the relation between between the the biding of man and being itself also stays away and this is precise this staying away of this of this relation with this constituted this original relation this initial re relation so since since um, this initial relation also stays away um, and we, and as a consequence of that as i said before man is cut off from his from his wesen so as his wesen is inert in a sense there is an inertia of man's constitutive being it's like being paralyzed from the waist down so it's really so this is who we are today huh? uh, we're really desperately trying to feel something to you know to have imp imp some impressions expressions to calculate things and so on to in this rather meaningless way of trying to make to produce some some sense or some surrogate of sense and um so uh, since this staying away mm, the staying away um, of this relation mm, so being itself and the biding of man it's important not to say man but the biding of man that's based this mentioned um since this staying away is also a modality of ereignis mm, so this staying away, which is nihilism, is eigentlich a nihilism. On the other hand, um, if I omit to see that what is actually happening, what is, is the staying away of being itself and therefore this, um, this relation of being itself to das Wesen des Menschen, if I omit that this is staying away, uh, that this is holding off, uh, and and instead of um, seeing that, I just um, observe um, a senselessness of beings in their in their sense. So if I omit a diagnosis 
on the level of Ereignis, then the, the result will be uh, uneigentlicher nihilismus, which just diagnoses a meaninglessness of things, mm? uh, being, being crisis and, and tries to find ways out from that. Mm? But ways out which are um, which fall short in, 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 in Heidegger's perspective, fall short um, in, uh, as far as the initial diagnosis is, is concerned. They fall short of what is actually happening. Mm? And therefore, they are in a way not doomed to failure because in Heidegger it's never a, a, a matter of overcoming anymore. The whole perspective changes, but they are they're completely blind and nothing good can come out from blindness. What, so in terms of, you said it's not about overcoming nihilism. It's not about setting new higher values or highest values. Um, what is it for Heidegger then? That, we, that, that nihilism gives us, what is the task for those who see nihilism? Well, the, the task is to, uh, to acknowledge it, uh, to, to, to correspond to it, you know, because that is uh, the, the, what, what really, as far as, as, far as uh, I can see, uh, from what I understand, what man should, really shouldn't do is he, shouldn't, he should not not respond to the source of, um, of, 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 of sense. So, <laughs> so when the source of sense has the, con the, 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 the beginning, the arche, has the structure, has the, 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 is the configuration of the holding off of being itself, then man is and is free and is himself in acknowledging, um, he really speaks of eingeständnis, uh, mm? admitting, acknowledging this holding off. And this is, there is no other manner to for man to be be himself to establish what it means to be a human being to answer the question who am i as a human being to not lose sight of the humanity of man then responding to this in whatever modality it shows and this also implies that what he, one form of what he calls the care namely namely the, the turning of this holding off into a into into a favor into offering itself so the the we can see it in terms of you know if we want to uh, refer to an image in terms of tides you know low tide high tide you know a tragic of sense is by acknowledging this this holding off so the a, a tragic way of res to, to acknowledge tragedy that's what i heard Uh, is to acknowledge this holding off the tides that come and go. And in the current epoch, what we have to acknowledge is the holding off of sense, but it's impending, which, which contains within itself, it's the possibility of its return. Yeah, well, clearly, we, 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 this is not something we can make as a humanity. We cannot decide, we cannot control, but certainly there is no way of, no other way of becoming aware of, of manners of rebuilding uh, um, a, a world of sense and building it anew than to um, basically look in the right direction or expect the right thing. You know, if you expect the wrong thing, if you expect that beings reobtain a value by themselves and from out of themselves, that is, that is not a likely, that's not something we can expect. You know, that's not, there is no expectability in beings mm. in, in the, especially in the way in which we have them today in uh, being this pure eff eff effectiveness and effectivity. I mean, you can, you can shake them around, you can, D destroy them, you can disintegrate them, you can build them together again, you can plan them, steer them, control them, compute them. You can do everything you want to pure effectiveness, but there is never, they, they never produce sense. And at the same time, there is, of course, there's a kind of a, uh, extreme addiction uh, towards uh, experience, 
everything's uh, to, to have very intense experiences because we, there's this cut being cut off from origin hence this urge to make experiences and even consume preformatted experiences uh which lurk everywhere um to, to that's when we can see the the effectiveness but also at the same time this uh withdrawal of sense um and there's something else that i i wanted to uh, point towards in your book you speak about in the weirdness of being you mentioned that man is to take again a mortal stance and just to mention very briefly heidegger's notes on hegel's negativity um he says something on death and i'm not sure if you're aware of if you have got that passage in your mind um at the moment but he says that, that, that the trouble with 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 um what, what hegel's got to say about death is that it, it doesn't get serious with death, that, that, that no catastrophe, which again contain catastrophe, contains of course the word care, turning, um, is possible. Um, so how, wh where is, how, what does it mean to take a mortal stance in this epoch? Well, the, the quickest way for me to answer is precisely this, this acknowledgement that we were talking about. Uh, the, the acknowledgement of um, what this senselessness is, namely, again, to adopt the formula, the holding off or staying away of, of being itself, that is, that is the immortal, immortal stance. And on the other hand, what you described before, as um, I, I would even tr perhaps try to save the word experience for something else and say that experience is precisely what today we absolutely is absolutely prohibited. But um, this addiction to, um, on the one hand, um, expression and, 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 and li life and, and living things, and on the other hand, the addiction to f feeling things in the sense of being impressed by things. But just look at uh, for instance, contemporary art. Mm, there, there you find, uh, there you find this very, very strongly. Um, uh, so this, um, this is precisely a way to, um, to, in a way, protect our incapacity to die. We are, we are, since we are, we are, we the faculty to die. The, Dying, and Heidegger says this, it's not my invention, it, that dying is uh, ein Vermögen hmm? uh, that, that characterizes us as human beings. And w when, when that um, is not there anymore, then w what, what do you do? You, you basically you, you f find ways to, um, to, to, um, Nietzsche speaks of the fact that we will use more narcotics and uh, anesthetics and so on. So um, you, you, you build some kind of protective uh, um, wall around you. You make of your body some kind of protection, but against uh, or in face of this incapacity to die. Because and, and then you have, you know, we could talk about so many phenomena, you know, like uh, um, the, the whole virtual um, world. But, you know there is really a desperate a desperate attempt to to feel something but it's it's des the desperation uh, in 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 our attempts to have any kind of to to feel you know uh, th that desperation is the the other i think as far as i can see is is the other part of the desperation that we are incapable of dying the incapacity to die is is a, is i think the phenomenon it, it, and it, that's the project of of transhumanism writ large is to get rid of death um but it's 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 uh it's uh that's, it's not just in transhumanism uh, it's 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 visible in the everyday too there's something more and then um perhaps in a in a further discussion we'll, we'll talk about death and focus on that because it's um beckoning um lurking somewhere in the background is the notion of rebuilding or the idea of rebuilding um heidegger of course writes building dwelling thinking um it which has to do again with becoming mortal um not just being biologically mortal the question is um 
from out of what, and this might be too obvious, but just to um, bring this out a bit further, from out of what can we rebuild for Heidegger? In this, not in the sense of overcoming, but what is the sense of rebuilding that we can find in him? Mm. I think uh, here we'll, we'll have to content ourselves with just um, remaining on the on the kind of, on the track that we've followed uh, to this point. But um, clearly, this the, the 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 constructive part I think just comes from um, from what happens if one uh, insists <laughs> um, long enough and. Uh, one has the strength to, uh, to 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 stand in this in this acknowledgement and to learn what it means to think in the domain which formally we indicate with this um, with this expression being itself, which you know we just stated that and we just said nothing about it. Clearly, that is the point and. If, if there is a converse, conversation that need, needs to be uh, probably um, held, it's a, it's a conversation about this awkward expression being itself, which says nothing to most of us. Um, and we imagine some strange uh, entity that is somewhere um, suspended um, over everything else. Um, so I, I think that's uh, right now what I what I what, what I can say to that. Um, it's uh, it's in 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 only in responding to this staying away that we learn what this element is because what Heidegger is is doing. He's just like all philosophers in their own way. He's just trying, doing his best to describe what is. Now, what is in our epoch is the staying away or the holding off of being itself. But this means that we learn about th this mysterious entity being itself. We learn about it as the holding off. So the whole, it's, there's no such thing as being itself, which is something. And then there is the holding off of being itself or the staying away of being itself. But, we learn to 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 think and to respond to and to find our own biding thanks to this trait of staying away so what is being itself it is the staying away that's the first thing that we learn about it mm -hmm. that's the way in which we wake up to it we wake up to a staying away and now a, a name that we give to that staying away is being itself. So we have to see it, we have to flip the thing. It's not there is something like being itself and, oh, look how unlucky we are, we are in this, you know, how unfortunate that exactly in our epoch it has to stay away. So <laughs> the, the founding experience is the shock of, of a staying away and a name that we give to this staying away is being itself. And just trying to, to acknowledge this staying away. And so we begin to learn, to know, to, to become familiar with a completely new dimension of, let's call it, sense constitution, a completely unprecedented dimension of sense constitution. And clearly, this is what I meant before. Yeah. The more we get to know this by remaining true to these traits, like staying away, that is a constitutive trait of what we call being itself. The more we stay true to these traits and, and don't say more than what we can say, but just what, what, what we can experience, the more we also learn ways of, con of construction. So that's now finally the way in which I come back to your question. Because we learn how to build, again, in a, in a true sense, you know, because... And there is no other way than that. You know, there is no uh, willing, there is no go good intentions. No good intentions are a good thing, but they are just not sufficient. Huh? There's no guaranteed learning outcome, shall we say. No, but on the other hand, I, I, I think one could say that nothing else than learning can happen. And, and this is actually the only way in which we can learn and inevitably learning happens. You know, it, it, you can, you can, you cannot but learn in this way.
every and every hour of every day you learn, not just you know, like Giacometti when he says, you know, I I know I'll never get there, but I know in every hour that I I've made pro progress and I've made progress forever. I will never go back to where I was an hour ago. You know, so he has this <laughs> this strange existence in which for decades he was making progress in a sense that is very different from our notion of progress. But yes, there is. Uh, there is, and there is so much, and there is especially, as always with learning, there is a learning of what it means to learn. So we have to learn in a completely new way what it means to learn because this, this, this change that is so um, unconspicuous as long as we just say the shift from the being of beings to being itself you know, because that's what it is. It's a microscopic shift is so, so huge. This, um, and the implications of this are so huge that the sense of learning also becomes a new one. Mm 